the difference in my understanding between an enlightened person and an unenlightened person is very simple. For an enlightened person, whatever happens through his or her life, whatever unfolds through his or her life, he or she does not hold himself or herself responsible for any kind of behavior. Very true. The unenlightened person will always hold himself or herself responsible for any kind of behavior. Unenlightened person believes and thinks he or she is responsible for his or her behavior. Enlightened person knows that he or she is no more responsible for any kind of behavior. Let me finish the whole story. You will have plenty of time for all kinds of most radical questions. But this kind of definition of enlightenment should not be a cop out. In the beginning stage of our seeking enlightenment to give us permission for a, any kind of irresponsible and foolish behavior. Any person can start copying out in the name of this kind of reasoning that he or she is not responsible for murdering someone, raping someone, deceiving for someone, cheating someone, hurting someone. Once this enlightenment reaches your heart, in the real sense of reaching your heart, you know for sure it has reached your consciousness in such a way that even if you want to believe you are responsible for any kind of behavior, you cannot hold that kind of belief anymore. You know the day this Realization reaches your heart. Even if you want to judge yourself, you find yourself incapable of judging yourself for any kind of behavior. Not only that you find yourself incapable of judging yourself for any kind of behavior, you find yourself incapable of judging anyone in whole world for judging any kind of behavior. For you, Judas and Jesus, in a mystical sense, happen to be Judas and Jesus, in the flow of life, Jesus was not responsible for being like Jesus, and Judas was not responsible for being like Judas. In a rose bush of life, in the rose bush of life, many, many thorns and many, many flowers bloom. Thorns are not responsible for being thorns, as roses, rose flowers are not responsible for being rose flowers. In your own body, you have beautiful eyes. You may give a lot more value to your eyes in comparison to your toes and fingers. But eyes are not responsible for being eyes, and fingers and toes are not responsible for, fing for being fingers and toes. The point is very subtle here. The point is, whatever you see in front of you is divine manifestation. The person whom you are judging was never capable of behaving in any other way than what he or she is behaving. If you are enlightened, you will always look from that very perspective. But that does not mean you will become careless. Naturally, you will still remain careful or heedful. How? You are walking on the street. You see a dog and dog is wagging his tail. And dog, dog seems to you very friendly and loving. So you wag. The dog wags his tail and you pat the dog. You walk a little further and the dog is barking and the dog seems to be a mad dog. You leave that road and you take another course. So
so that dog will not bite you, attack you. Do you blame the dog for being a mad dog? You know dog happened to be mad. If you could treat the dog, you care to treat the dog. If you don't care for the dog, you stay away from the dog. A dog has nothing to be a mad dog. When the mystical wisdom dance in your consciousness, that no one has done anything to be who one is. You accept everyone as everyone is. And that is why the saying goes, hate the sin, but not the sinner. Hate the sin, but not the sinner. There is no sinner. Who is the sinner? If you observe your own life very carefully, you will find you never ever intend to hurt yourself. That does not mean you always do things which empower you and support you and uplift you. Sometimes you overeat. Sometimes you overdrink. Sometimes you watch television too much. Sometimes you gossip too much. Sometimes you fool around too much. And you feel, oh my God. The point is subtle here. When you are able to control yourself the way you would like to control yourself, what do you do to make yourself capable of controlling yourself the way you would like to control yourself? And when you fail to control, your, control yourself the way you would like to control yourself, the question is, what do you do? to make yourself incapable of controlling yourself. You do better nothing. Either to make yourself capable of controlling your bad behavior or making yourself incapable of controlling your bad behavior. That is why in our scriptures there is a beautiful statement by Duryodhana. At some point, someone Krishna, someone asked him this question, why do you behave in such a nasty way? And he replied in the most solemn way, Janami dharmam nachame pravritti, Janami dharmam nachame nivritti. Its the meaning is, I know what is righteousness, but I don't have inclination for that. I know what is evil, but I have no, I don't have so much power to Resist my temptation for giving in to evil. That is how the life is constantly flowing through me. Of course, again, it could be a cop out. So I am suggesting very, very carefully to all of you that as long as you think and you believe you can make a change, you are responsible for your behavior. Behave in the best possible way. Be the best doer. Be the most responsible doer. And when you behave in the best possible way, you realize the mystical truth. And what is the mystical truth? That you were never ever behaving. It was a, it was a cosmic life flow which was inspiring you to behave the way you ended up behaving. It is that realization which gives you a sense of complete freedom. Unless you have that, no matter how many years you have meditated, no matter how, how many years you have been celibate, no matter how many years you have been practicing selfless service and chanting and compassion to all fellow beings, in my understanding, you are still a confused, ignorant person. Let me repeat, let me make it clear. There could be two persons. One could be impulsive, undisciplined, and one could be very disciplined. The disciplined person could be ignorant, and undisciplined person could be enlightened. In my understanding, an enlightened person knows that all desires arise on their own, he or she does nothing to create any kind of desire. 
either for sex or for God consciousness, either for money or for power. The other thing is, when a desire arises, an enlightened person knows whether he gives in to a lower desire or he resists a lower desire, whether he follows a positive desire or he is not quite ready to pursue a positive desire. It is not up to him or her to register desire or to pursue a desire. Only that understanding makes him enlightened. And why it is so? When a desire arises in your consciousness, let me explain it to you. The moment a desire arises, your mind, your memory bank, where all your impressions are stored, According to those stored impressions, a shuffling takes place in your consciousness. It is a mechanical process. You are never involved in, in that. But until you realize it, you think I am involved. That is the illusion of doership. A shuffling takes place in your mental body, where, where all your impressions are stored. And when the shuffling takes place, from that shuffling, this impression arises in your consciousness. I should register this desire or I should fulfill this desire. This sense of doership that I decide, I make a choice, is simply an illusion. When you put energy for a week, for a month, for a year or for an hour, whenever you can catch it, that the decision, whether you will fulfill a desire or you will register desire is never ever made by you. It is made by your mind, your stored impressions. But that body of the mind, that body where impressions are stored is not a conscious entity. It is, it is totally a mechanical kind of body which has intelligence like a computer, but does not have least awareness.